Welcome to the Qualify Gamer Guys podcast. I'm your host, Neil. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, great start. Neil's hosting this podcast. I'm, I'm Steve. Neil. <laughs> and that's what it is always, is Steve. <laughs> Let me tell you about this guy, Steve. What an attractive man. I'm your host, Steve. With me, as always, is Neil. This is podcast twenty one. We are we are drunk. We are blasted, wasted. If you couldn't tell by that opening, we're, we're hammered. Twenty one years old. We're going out. If you see us stumbling around, could you please return us home to our eucalyptus tree? <laughs> I was going to say to a little <laughs> forest of eucalyptus. Um. All right. This is uh the the post E three episode. This is why this is releasing on a probably a Thursday. Um, we're recording on Wednesday. But you know it's it's Neil's and he likes to slack, so he probably won't get this up till Thursday. So um, yeah, so, so so we're gonna start. You know we don't want to miss a week in video game release history, but we're not gonna talk a lot about it because we don't really care about it too. <laughs> but uh, ju- uh, June twenty first in two thousand five, Battlefield two came out. I maybe played like an hour of this on a computer. Have you ever played it, Neil? This was the game that made me like Battlefield. This oh, took okay. me this took me away from Call of Duty and made me like Battlefield. But you've heard my Battlefield rants, so yes. I won't so I won't get into it. But people say Battlefield Two is the last good Battlefield, and everything so far has been subpar, and they're just trying to get back to it. Or well, do you agree? Um, may I don't know. I've had a lot of fun. Battlefield Two was like they just had it perfect, and then mm-hmm. three I really really liked. And then four, like uh, I don't know, man. It's all, it's a little crazy. I'm trying to. I'm starting to get them confused now in my mind. What, the difference between four and three. Four, I don't know. I really like four, and I really like three. Hardline is probably my least favorite, and that's just totally different. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that is a the hardline's a weird game. It's its own thing, you know. Yeah, but it's not. It's not bad. I, I know you like it, and at some point, hopefully, you get it, and we'll just kind of drive around in some cars. Eh, maybe I will. I don't know, Neil. That's asking a lot. Asking a but, wh- whole lot. Um, so yeah, I, I played like a little bit of this on the computer, and I'm—I mean, combination of just not being a big computer gamer and uh, all that—I just I didn't really enjoy it. But I've never really enjoyed Battlefield, as as That's everybody true. knows. I guess uh, I guess one tiny story I have of this is um, one time I was hanging out, I was going over to this girl's place. Oh. And it was just like a pregame party or whatever, but nice. we were like drinking there and then we're going someplace else. And everyone in that house wasn't going out, and they were all just playing Battlefield Two. Like they just sat in a room playing it. They had like a little land party going on. Oh yeah. And so like you know you're walking in a new house with a bunch of guys and all these new people and you don't know any of them, and so you don't want to be an idiot or anything. So I was like, oh, you guys are playing Battlefield Two? I love that game. And for whatever reason, that just like sold it. Like they yeah. all just loved me immediately. They're like, they're like, Neil's in. <laughs> that was it. And they like, I for the next couple weeks, they were always just asking that girl when I was gonna come back over and just play Battlefield with them. So yeah, Battlefield two, screw, make make some friends. And she never invited you over again. <laughs> we uh we played a lot of Peggle too. Ooh, Peggle. You know. If you know what I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. Well, that came out. Um. Ten years ago, Jesus Christ! Oh my God, uh, that's so long ago. There's no releases this week because we're gonna head right well, into the. Is it worth mentioning Batman? Is that this week? Next week? That's next week. Okay. Uh, next week we will be talking about Batman, but okay. There are no releases this week, so we're gonna go straight into the E3 news segment. Kicking it off, we have an email. Here's the mail. It never <laughs> fails. It makes me want to whack my tail. When it comes, I want to whale mail. It comes from Sir Caruso. He writes to the Qualified Gamer guys. He goes, what's up, guys? I thought E3 was pretty good this year. Fall is looking to be promising. I was mainly interested in Sony, and I thought they did well. It was mostly game after game. I'm very interested in their new IP. That'd be Horizon, uh, whatever the subtitle for that is. Horizon Zero Dawn, is that it? Who knows? Something. Horizon. uh, I felt like it was an answer to Xbox's Tomb Raider, aside from Uncharted, of course. But it did remind me of Tomb Raider 2, just because it was a girl with a bow. Um, (laughs) Very, pretty much the same exact game then. Yes. Uh, I was kind of wish it was actual dinosaurs instead of robots, but hey, nevertheless, it looks good. 
I can go on and on about E3, but it'd be too long. So my personal favorite was Kingdom Hearts, my man. Uh, very he, he knows what he's doing. Very interested to see what worlds are available this time around. Another favorite for me was Need for Speed. Looks like they're finally giving us what we want. Yeah, I'm interested to see what you guys have to say. And he also tells us where he's from, so we're not going to publicly broadcast that. But I grew up there, Sir Caruso, so I probably know around where you grew up as he well. He knows where you live is what he's saying. Yeah, uh, the koala so will be in your... In don't your stop sending here. mail or you will see him. If you'd like to email us, you can email us at koalafygamerguys at gmail.com. Talk to us some, about E3 um, and let us know what you thought about it, just like Sir Caruso did. So we're going to go into the E3 segment here. We're pretty much going to talk about each of the press conferences, look back on what we predicted last week, see how much came true, and just talk about what was announced in general. So we'll start off with Bethesda, because that one started on Sunday. Uh, Neil is going to be the grandmaster of our predictions last week. So what did we predict, and how did it turn out? Okay, so here's what we predicted. I guess, okay. first just off... Let's list them off. Just list list what we thought. That's, yeah, and then we'll just go. All right, so basically, we were the main things we were uh, predicting is what games we thought would appear. Okay. And so you guessed. We guessed. I forgot who guessed exactly. Doom, Dishonored Doom. 2, okay. e- ESO, uh, Elder Scrolls Online, and mm-hmm. Fallout 4. So we nailed it. We nailed every game. They every single about. one. And here's, here's the impressive thing. Steve made the bold claim of Friday the 13th. November this year, Fallout 4 would come out. And it's coming out, what, the 11th? I already forgot. The 10th. The 10th. I was three days off. Three days off. That's so impressive. I'm not, like, I'm really impressed with how now, close I were. knew. I, would, I just knew it was coming out this year. I knew it. There's no way it wasn't going to. They wouldn't keep it under wraps this long just to be like, oh, yeah, it's not coming out till next fall. No. Right, so, so, so let me just straight up ask you, how excited are you for Fallout 4 now? I am so excited. I pre-ordered the um, <laughs> the pack with the Pit Boy holder and like the everything that comes with it, the premium pack. I'm playing the iOS game Fallout Shelter. I am so pumped. But Neil, let me tell you what I'm really pumped about, and that's the Elder Scrolls card game. <laughs> I'm actually that that is the most excited thing. I for cannot me this wait. Conference. I have fallen so far down the Hearthstone <laughs> rabbit hole that it's it's concerning to my health um i've i've i bought both the single player campaigns at this point i've beaten them entirely uh i just i can't stop neil i can't stop i need more hearthstone you wait you've beaten both campaigns yes i bought them and i beat them both no wonder why you have so many good cards yeah i thought i told you that i beat everything i beat all the class challenges and all the bosses i had no idea you did that i thought i thought you only did the first one and you didn't even finish the first one all the way. No, they, I, they are so fun. Oh, man. I, 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 I've only bought the first adventure wing? of the first you, one. You bought the first wing of the first one? Yeah, and I haven't even finished that. Well, they're so worth it. They're so much fun. You get really good cards out of it. To be honest, though, out of all the cards that I got out of them, because you get for each wing you finished, you get a legendary. But I only use one of the legendaries because a lot of them are kind of like, you know, run in the mill. Because I guess they're like... Uh, Blizzard's like, well, anyone could get these, so we're not going to make them great. So the only one I use is the one you get for beating the final boss of the first uh, story. That's the uh, Kel- Keldusad. That's the one that when uh, any minion that dies that turn comes back to life. That's the best one. But beating, <sighs> but beating the final boss is really, really hard. <laughs> Apparently, it's like, you know, frustrating to do and i did it in like three tries i got lucky on my draw so i'm, I'm happy i got it did you did you learn later that it was like supposed to be really tough yeah and like-, like i went on the reddit and everyone's like i've been trying to beat him for like six months i want that <laughs> card, i want that card so badly and like everyone's like posting like special decks that they're like oh just make your deck like this you'll have like a 25 percent chance to beat him which is about as high as you can get <laughs> i beat them with just like my regular i think i was using a paladin back then a regular paladin deck like not that many good cards in it i just got really really lucky wow. anyway uh so the elder scrolls card game obviously with something that would excite me based on how obsessed i am with hearthstone um and uh yeah i mean fallout 4 looks awesome neil not really into Fallout I, 4. That's I'm, fine. I've just never been into Fallout at all. And 
I totally understand that this game looks amazing, and I get from a Fallout perspective. How about all the crafting, though? Huh? That's it. Looks like they're really going deep into everything you can do. You oh. can just you could like build up. You could build your own house. Yeah, like all that's really cool, but it that's never interested me in any game, like the crafting. Like, I, maybe if you could raid other people's. Well, I, I, well, essentially what's going to happen is that it becomes like a tower defense game in yeah. that we'll get people who come and attack to your place and like, you know, you can set up sentries and all that. So What is cool is the fact that they're doing mod support on Xbox One. And at- the PS4. Oh, it's coming to the PS4 too? Yes, they said not at launch, but within a month afterwards. Because that's when all the crazy stuff happens. Like if it's oh, yeah. really supported, like Skyrim is only so popular because of all the mods that continuously yep. come out. And if that works in Fallout, which I think it will because it's a big enough game and it's open enough, that's when you get get some really crazy stuff. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of it's gonna be I think okay. You're gonna have you like I know people are gonna have a blast with it. I'm not saying it's gonna be a bad game. I'm just saying it has yet to interest me in any meaningful way. Okay. And that's just because I don't I don't like those kind of games, more or less. Hmm. How excited are you for Dishonored 2 though? Uh, um just kinda air. Eh. I'll play it. Like, I played the first Dishonored like a year after it came out, so I feel like I'm kind of just going to do the same with the second one. Like, I like Dishonored, but like, it's not worth it for me to go and. I, it also depends when does it come out, what else is coming out near it. You know, if it's like the only game of a month, I'll probably get it released. I bet it's going to come out. I don't know. I can't say the year yet because they just announced it, but it's, I bet it's going to be a November release with all the other stuff. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be in November, but. That, that means I won't play it, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've always said bad things about the first one. And my belief has always kind of been the second one will be a lot better. And so I'm willing to try it again. Kind of like the Assassin's Creed effect. Yeah, sort of. Like some like sequels sometimes, they just fix all the mistakes of the first one without going too far off the path of the series of where the first game kind of came from. And so they're usually yeah. the best, like Uncharted 2 and whatnot. And I used to have a whole list in my head to defend this argument, but I can't really. Assassin's Creed 2. For sure. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, but the one thing that we kind of, not that we were disagreeing about or anything, but you were super pumped about, and I was like, it kind of looks generic, is Doom. That you were, you were, you saw Doom, I and you were like, this looks so much multi- fun. Yeah. The, and, I think that the multiplayer is going to push that game over the top, especially that whole map creator thing. I, I think it's really cool. I think the fact that it seems more and more developers and companies are putting creation tools in the hands of the player and it more or less is just like hey here's this game we made and then to make the lifespan of it go longer just keep making stuff because mm-hmm. it looked like it was a lot of stuff too it was like oh yeah you know just make these preset uh modes and like preset kind of shapes or whatever it's like you could really animate yeah all these things like they were putting like fire traps on the wall and mm-hmm. putting like all these th- and like that always happens for halo you see all these types of game modes they make where they make like crazy a, stuff yeah, yeah like crazy so that, i'm looking forward to that um it, it does look horde, fun it looks like the horde a, mode they showed too it looked pretty fun the what the horde mode the horde, horde mode's yeah. always fun with friends yes it, it is it's hard to find one that's not no matter what it is that's true i, but, I just love co-op it's it, it should be in every game which it should be it's good to see a lot of games seem to be going to it except i think uh, yeah Halo, it's I'm, just dropped it who? I think I think Halo Guardians isn't doing split screen co op. Oh. Which usually Halo does do. That's strange. I know Battlefront is, but that'll is be. Is it? Yes, it is. There's split screen co op in uh, Battlefront oh. or split screen online or whatever, and the Horde mode. Oh, that's the best. Yes, it is. Um, all right. So, what else in Bethesda? Do we have anything else to say? Um, no. The the biggest announcements of Bethesda was definitely Dishonored Two. Fallout 4, um, Fallout Shelter, if you want to talk about how your people doing. They hate me. That <laughs> game is really hard. Like, it's so hard to get your, like, uh, your utilities high enough for people to be happy. Because, like, to have them high, you have to work people to the bone. And if you work them to the bone, they get really, like, unhappy. So, I mean, everyone's just got to suck it up. The world's <laughs> over. And everyone's like, oh, I need a nap. Fuck it's, sake. It was so, funny because when you said still that. Alive. You're still alive. Because I'm, I'm just following, like, there was a big, like, flux on Twitter when that came out, and everyone was talking about it. And when I asked you when it was doing, you were like, they all hate me now. And, like, that day, everyone on Twitter was like, 
my people love me and now they all hate me. They're like, all they would yeah. do was having sex every day and now they just hate me. And it just, yeah, it all they, happened in like one at one time. They're so eager. To, they're so hard to please. It's ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, they, they fuck like rabbits. <laughs> all you have to do is leave a guy and a girl in, the, in a room with a bed for like a minute and then they just run off and have a child. Seems very irresponsible to me. <laughs> Make, just making tons of babies in the, the great, last. The great thing is then 12 hours later that kid grows up and I can send him to work in the sweatshop and then there's <laughs> the, uh, the power generation plant because I need more power. God, I can't um, wait for it to come to Android. It's going to it's gonna like go through its phase and no one's going to care about it and that's going to come out on Android and I'm going to be really hyped about it. you're going to want to talk about be like, you know, I, no one plays that game. It's, shut up. I'm playing Hearthstone. Uh, <laughs> all right. So Bethesda, prediction-wise, we did quite well. Uh, and then just content wise, excited about the games they announced. I think that I'll probably end up playing each one they talked about, except for the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, you, you, you said you might play that though. Well, it's just because my friend got it, and like I love, I know I'm gonna get my Elder Scrolls like, like, like you know, like hankering. That's why I was wishing that they were gonna announce an Oblivion remaster because their 10 year anniversary is in March. But uh, I just, I don't know. I don't want to fall down that rabbit hole. Um, so Microsoft though, what did we have written down for Microsoft? For Microsoft, we had Tomb Raider, Gears of War Collection, mm-hmm. Halo 5, Tech Talk, Tech Indie Talk. Games, okay. Forza 6, and No mm-hmm. COD. So we said we was going to start with Tomb Raider and finish with Halo. That was incorrect. Yes, it started with Halo. But they were both there. Yes. Gears of War collection. It was the next Gears of War game. It was a remaster of the first there, one. There was a remaster, so yeah. I, I'm kind of counting that. Tech Count talk, that, yeah. tons of it. Not tons of it. Not as much as Halo usual, lens. but new well, controller. You got Halo lens in there and the, and the controller. Halo lens was so cool. We got to talk about that. Um, Forza 6, yeah. They showed an indie montage, which we probably mm-hmm. should have put montage down because I think we were both thinking that. And no Call of Duty. Which was my call, which turned out to be correct. It did. Because I knew, Neil, I knew Sony got the uh, exclusivity. I had an inside rep on that one. Yeah, you, 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 uh, you guaranteed it, and you were right. That's all I, I did. Say. I guaranteed it. That's, I was two for two as far as that goes. I, I, uh, the Bethesda, I was three days off, and then I uh, told you there was going to be no COD at the Xbox one. So yeah. You know what they call me? They call me a Big Prediction Steve. That's my nickname. <laughs> I thought it was the Tinder King. All right. So, yeah, my name is the Tinder King as well. <laughs> so I don't care. Let me just straight up say I don't care about Forza 6. It's really cool for people if they care about stuff like that. Um, Halo is Halo. It looks like they kind of upped it with a bigger multiplayer, more people in it going on called the Warzone. Um, Nathan Fillion, lots of Nathan Fillion if you're a Nathan Fillion fan. But the game that really excited me, which I don't know if you actually saw the trailer to this, Steve, is called We Core. And I know, like, I saw pictures of the trailer, and I didn't watch it. Okay, so it's essentially, it looks like you're in a post-apocalyptic world. You're this woman that has, like, this robot dog, and mm. these robot spiders attack you. And your robot dog sacrifices himself to save you, and then you take, like, his core. It's like this blue core se- sphere, and you take it out of him, his mangled, dead robot body, and you put it in another robot, and the robot stands up, and then you, like, go into this dungeon or something and then the mm-hmm. way the screen ends is your your character standing there and it's like six robots are behind her all different kinds all with like a blue sphere in them so it kind of mm-hmm. shows that like you're going to kind of get new uh side characters to help you if you put this core in them so there's not a lot of um details about it gameplay wise or anything but I, i'm always interested for new ips yeah i love me some new ips <laughs> Good input, Steve. And um, <laughs> and so it looks cool, but that's that's really not much to say about it. So you watch the trailer. It looks it looks like I, a game that has a really cool game. premise I that could very gameplay. easily be bad. I need gameplay. Yeah, same. Like I don't I don't base anything off cinematics anymore. Me yeah, too. cinematic trailers are just baloney. Yeah, pretty much. Um, speaking of baloney, let's talk about this. New My, controller uh, that costs one hundred and thirty dollars. Yo, what the fuck is that about? One hundred and thirty dollars <laughs> for a controller. What are they on? Who is going to buy that? Oh, so many people. If you buy two of those, 
you could literally almost buy another Xbox One. <laughs> and the game, because it comes with the game. Yeah, it's it's insane. Um, it's going to drop, no doubt about it. It looks, honestly, it looks like a really cool controller. I've never cared about controllers. It looks awesome. The ability to, like, take joysticks out and put new ones in. And mm-hmm. just, like, the side mapping and all the mapping on it and, like, the extra buttons down low. Really cool. I was expecting it to be, like... Eighty dollars or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I when I saw it, I was like, oh, be like eighty. Yeah, like I was like, maybe they'll do a hundred at first, but they'll drop it down pretty quickly, and then they'll say, oh, it's on sale all the time. But a hundred and twenty or a hundred and thirty is it's too high. That's insane. That is insane for a controller. I I guess the thought is like, I don't understand. Like, at what point does someone go? I'd rather have this fancy controller instead of two brand new games, or just two controllers, one for your friend. To like play with well, you. these are Xbox. They don't have friends. You forgot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so the price is a little insane. Controller looks cool. Um, insane I, in the memory. <laughs> what's gonna happen is Sony's probably gonna be like, "Oh, that's a really cool controller," and then they're just gonna copy it and be like, "Oh yeah, you can have it for like seventy. And then people are just gonna be like, "Oh, Sony, you're like incredible. Look at you, yeah. like this crazy inventor." It's like, whatever. As long <laughs> as they crazy give it to you. <laughs> um. Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio himself. And so I'm trying. I'm trying to look at these other games. Oh, I guess it's worth mentioning the Rare Collection. You know, full of rare games. Uh, all the Banjo Kazooie Maker people. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, retro or not retro? Rare, rare, rare games. Yeah. So there's like a collection of thirty of them. Um, and then they're also making a new one. It's like a multiplayer pirate adventure. It looks, mm-hmm. it looks interesting. Again, cinematic. It looks like it looks. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. I say that all the time. All they need to do is not title it Assassin's Creed. Just make a pirate game. You just get to be a pirate, and you just like do whatever you want. You can just almost, and then you put like a whole like. But I don't want to be a pirate. <laughs> I was, was going to say, you can be like a merchant, a privateer. You can do whatever you want. Oh, I'm a merchant. Want, but, you know. I'll take a merchant, please. <laughs> Have a look at my wares. <laughs> but the real thing, um, unless you want to talk about Gears of War, which I don't really care about it, but I know it's a big, huge deal that it was announced. Whatever. There's There are two things I really want to talk about, mainly. Um, okay. So, the first one is going to be the Halo line. No, you know what? The first one is going to be the backwards compatibility because we don't have super much to say about that besides the fact that it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Like, But people are saying Xbox, Microsoft won the conference simply because of this announcement. I wouldn't say that. Once we get to Sony, we'll probably fanboy out and you'll see why. But yes. it is cool. I definitely wish my PS4 had backwards compa- compatibility. I know you sold all your stuff to get your PS4, but I, I have. Because I, I didn't win it in a Taco <laughs> Bell contest using my uh, method. Well, you, you're getting pretty lucky in Hearthstone, which we'll talk about. So it, oh, it's yeah. about the same thing. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I was so happy when I saw that pop up. I can't wait to bring that out in the game. And the guy goes, goes like, wow, I concede because that's so cool. <laughs> He's probably like, what a loser. He probably buys all his packs. Um, so backwards compatibility, compa- I can't, can't do it, compatibility, really cool, wish it was on the PlayStation, I have all my old games still, it's not, it's on Xbox. I heard, what have you heard? A pretty good idea of how to do this, and Sony should this, like, so basically all Sony has to do, this is so easy to program too, so if the game is on PlayStation now, just like, take your disc, and like, let's say I have Uncharted 3, I can pop it in. It's like, oh, you have Uncharted 3, you own that game, why don't you just stream it? Because you can't play it on this console, but because it's on a streaming service, you can stream it for free because you own the disc. Why don't they just do that? That's such an easy fix. It's it's the one thing that I'm going to say Sony is really money-grabby about, because usually they're pretty good about it. But them trying to, like, just get you to pay for the games you already have. And Microsoft, that was my favorite thing in the conference, is... They were like, we're not going to make you pay for the games you already owe. And that was like a direct punch to uh, Sony, which is true. Yeah, and I, and it I, was. 
it's a stupid it's a stupid service that nobody uses. Yeah, and no one will use it, and they're just going to complain and complain and complain until they do exactly what you said. Hopefully, where's the ambulance? <laughs> and then there was the Halo lens. Which did you see a demo for this? Yeah, I watched the Minecraft demo of it. So it looks really cool. It it worked pretty well in the demo. People are of course saying like there's a very small table space they had it on, so it's not that effective. People are also saying, and I agree, no one actually wants to play a game like this. I would not want to be like, I want to play some Minecraft. Let me put my get my Halo lens going and do all the touch controls or whatever. But it would be cool for this exact thought that like I see people building. If I would strictly talk in Minecraft, if people are trying to make. Uh, like designs, you know how they build crazy structures. I could see this really helping. Like I could see them getting like a big picture version of it and helping them build faster. And for other yeah. games, it would be cool if you had like I don't know. I'm I'm thinking maps is the only thing I'm thinking. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like a three dimensional map of like the game yeah. you're playing, kind of like the they're always talking about smart screens. That's kind of what this would be. Is that you could just be like. Have this on, you're playing your game normally on the wall or whatever you're playing your Halo lens on. And then you like you just look to your right and there'll just be a map next to you and you can just like touch it and then it will like a point will appear. Yeah, yeah. Like, that, like that would be kind of cool. But I like that, yeah. That's I'm not seeing enough reason why Halo you want Halo lens besides the fact that it's just a cool thing to brag about having. I could see it being cool for like Minecraft if you could like play Legos with it, you know what I mean? Like 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 with your hands, like pick up and place and yeah, all that stuff. That'd be cool. I mean, like it. It's definitely someone's gonna come up with something that's gonna be really cool about it. I was I was amazed at how well it worked. Um, I did not think it would work that well. When I was expecting a really awkward moment when it wasn't when it was gonna like break on stage, like the Uncharted demo. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was just that was just a controller, right? That just stopped working. But man, if this was like. If the whole thing just crashed, they must have been so worried. But anyways, yeah, so that was Microsoft. Do you have anything else to say about it? Um, um, Tomb Raider. Nothing. Tomb Raider's coming. This is, I, I don't really have a lot to say because I didn't watch this and I didn't watch uh, Square Enix. Ooh. So those are the two that I'm going to... I guess the one thing I'll say that looks kind of interesting is there's the developers from Gone Home uh, are making a new game called Tacoma. And it looks like you're more or less in an abandoned space station. Uh huh. And so, and like, it, it looks very suspenseful. Which so, kind alien of, isolation. Yeah. But, okay. Maybe without the alien? I don't know. Um, and then there was another game that was kind of interesting, it was called Ashen, and it was like a little indie game. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't really say anything besides the fact that it just looks really pretty. And that mm-hmm. it's co-op, and it co-op. looks like a co-op adventure game. Co-op and adventure game, okay. I'm that looks in. pretty, and I think that's what it's going to be. Um, all right. Well, Neil was our Microsoft correspondent there because he watched it at work. Well, I didn't because I want to. <laughs> I didn't want to risk getting caught from Microsoft because I, you know, because it's Microsoft. Me. Well, because I don't own an Xbox One, so like nothing. I mean, like Halo Lens is cool. And it's cool to see the games previewed and everything, but it doesn't affect me until I buy one. So yeah, I mean, it, it yeah. But besides that, Microsoft wasn't really. Besides the backwards compatibility, Halo Lens, there was no crazy wow factor. Yeah, there was no wow factor, unlike Sony, no. which we'll get to. Um. All right. So next we have EA. All and right. S- predictions for this. In the game. Battlefront. Yes, that was easy. Sports. We just said sports because that was obvious. They did do that. Need yes. for Speed. Mm-hmm. I think I meant to say Mirror's Edge, but I said Mirror Speed. So Mirror Speed. That game did not get announced. <laughs> and and that was it. And we said it was going to end with Battlefront, which I believe it did. It did. Yes. And then um, I don't think we said what it was going to start with. I think we no, we said it was going to start with Mirror's Edge, which I do not think it did. No, Mirror's Edge came somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it started with Mass Effect, mm-hmm. which is a big, which is a big uh, wow for many people. Because um, unless I'm mistaken, which I could very easily be, I don't think Mass Effect there were like even rumors about it or anything like that. 
I'm sure there were some rumors, but I didn't hear anything. I, I didn't either, and I kind of, after Mass Effect 3, I kind of liked the game, so I was kind of paying attention to it. I think, because this is Bioware, and they're all about Dragon's Age Inquisition, mm-hmm. so I think it was all the focus was on that recently, and so I wasn't expecting a Mass Effect game so soon. But this one looks really cool, because you're exploring a new galaxy, it's a new character, it's a new... Not yes, it's, universe. It's a total reboot, kind but of. But galaxy. It's a new It's a new galaxy, Steve. Well, you know, galaxies are a lot smaller than universes, Neil. That is true, but bigger than what Mass Effect 3 was. So it looks like a... It was just, again, cinematic. Mm-hmm. I think there was a little... No, I think it was all cinematic. Um... Just an announcement, more or less, but it was a good way to start the show. Just like a, like a, hey, this thing exists. Yeah. Um, then there was a bunch of stuff about, like, Star Wars The Old Republic, which I don't really care about, but apparently... Yep. Nice The Old Republic, some Kotar 2 action. Yep, pretty much. Um, a game that got a lot of people hyped about um, was this game called Unravel. Did you see yes, any of that? Which, yes! Excuse me, Yoshi's Woolly World exists already. <laughs> I, I'm not impressed with this game. Um, I'm not either, because Yoshi's Woolly World ex- <laughs> exists. I know that people, a lot of the reason people were talking about it on Twitter, which I was like following along with the show, is because the guy, the developer behind it apparently was just like shaking in excitement and just like a typical like, oh, this guy's like, he cares so much about his game, look at him. like. And I get that. I just, Unlike but, like, that guy in the uh, Square conference that came out with that moon <laughs> his head or whatever the fuck that was. <laughs> What was that? That was apparently he's the director of the game, and he just he doesn't like to show his face in public. Because some of the like one, it was a GameSpot editor or whatever had a tweet goes like, "Look, this is funny, and I'm making jokes too, but he doesn't ever show his face in public. That's why he's like this. This is not just like a publicity stunt. That he he does things like that, which is <laughs> square. It's All right, whatever. like. Fine, whatever. But like the guy's wearing, or like you, you could just put like a mask on you know, that like huge circle, dude. If you saw, you know, him, like that looks ridiculous. If you saw him walk out, like they announce his name and they just turn to the curtain and no one comes out for at least five seconds and they have to like go back there and like lead him out. He almost trips up the stairs. Like it was so, it was weird. But unravel, I want when I saw the gameplay, it didn't look good to me at all. It looked cool. It looks interesting. It looks really detailed and beautiful and all that but it looks like a very basic basic platformer and not i don't think you played this but there was a game called the puppeteer that was also very cool looking had this really yeah. cool aesthetic and everything i, to I it. remember wanting to play that but it came out literally right at the end of the life cycle for the ps3 yeah it did and uh i played it and i enjoyed it because of the story and it was kind of quirky and cool but it, it was like my least favorite platformer it had like the hardest thing i had to do in the game was jump between two platforms one time. Like, I couldn't do it. And all he just, because he just wouldn't grab the ledge. Like, he was just really bad gameplay. And that's what I think this is going to be. I don't think it's going to be challenging puzzles or fast or anything. I think it's going to be like more about experiencing the story or whatever, which, if that's what you're into, that's fine. But I don't think it's going to be the next cool, fun platform you're going to want to play repeatedly. Um, then there was a bunch of sports. sports. I, don't care, I don't care about any of them. Pele no, came no, out to talk you about care, FIFA. I about NHL, but. There was nothing really shown about it. Yeah, um, I, no one cares about that. Uh, Mirror's Edge look pretty cool. Looks, it looks not not decent. not not much going on about it yet. So it's a ways off. Let's be honest. It really is. But this is the game that came out and everyone hated. And then of course, like a couple a year goes by and turns out everyone actually loves it. And then they were crying for it forever. But Dice has been wrapped up in making Battlefield for pretty much ever. And then Visceral Games made Battlefield Hardline to more or less give DICE time to go back to Mirror's Edge, kind of. Mm -hmm. More complicated than the way I just described, but that's basically the story, I think. So Mirror's Edge was kind of cool looking. I really like Mirror's Edge. I'm definitely going to... I want to say play it until I see more. The first game you could beat in like three or four hours, and there was nothing else to do. And I'm pretty sure they learned from that, and they're going to have like a ton of things to do in this game. And... So I'm looking forward to that, but we both know the thing we really want to talk about is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. Yes, of course. I actually <laughs> played Garden War- Warfare. <laughs> one thing they've actually played. But no, that's cool that they're announcing another one. That's actually just a really fun game. When me and Steve were playing the first one, we just kept saying over and over, this is just fun. It was like a non-frustrating game, which Steve is experiencing with Splatoon, 
but a game I have yet to experience that with since Garden Warfare. Definitely not Hearthstone. God damn Hearthstone, man. <laughs> I just want to play it right so now. I'm so glad. Dude, I'm leaving my job, so all I do at work is play Hearthstone. Because, <laughs> because it was like, so funny when you like, anything to do. Oh, man. Uh, but really, the game we want to talk about is, of course, Battlefront, the game that Steve swears is not like Battlefield. It's not. Although Here's, it's identical some, to it. Let me give you some reasons. <laughs> One, the jetpacks make everything faster. Okay. Two, the uh, there's no first of all uh, one big thing there's no aiming down sights. I'm gonna be playing in third person mode because that's what I remember Battlefront as, and that's what I loved about it. Yeah. And four, I mean, did you see that Hoth level, man? Just the Star Wars like interaction between the uh, vehicles is so much more fun than like you know the whatever you get in fucking Battlefield. Okay? <laughs> it looked, it's identical. No, it's not. <laughs> It's not. First, uh, the jetpacks are huge, first off. That makes everything so much faster, just like Call of Duty. That's only going to be a couple characters. If, if, if it's like Battlefront, the original one, there was only a couple characters that had jetpacks. I think there were the guys it, with the rocket launchers, maybe. Yeah, well, that's fine. But, like, you know what I mean? And then, just, for, um, oh, for me personally, playing it in third person makes it a completely different game. But um, I, will, I will give you, I bet it will be faster because... The spawning in Battlefront has always been... No, that's not even true. I definitely remember no, Battlefront that, spawning. No, it, I bet you it'll be faster just in, like, if it works like the old Battlefront, in that, like, you remember how, you like, the main mode is, like, capturing those five points or whatever? Yeah. And, like, you're constantly spawning next to a point that people are trying to take. You know what I mean? There's, it's like, the... I yeah. guess there's the, there's the two... that You both start in your one point, then you both, you know, get a point closer to each other, and eventually, like, you're always going to have two points that are next to each other. So um, if you're spawning there. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's that's very true. Um, I do remember in Battlefront, this was just a personal, this was a user error where I would spawn at the wrong point sometimes and then I'd have to run all the way over there. But I, I bet it would be faster. You made a good point in the demo that like it's hard to tell because it's a staged demo. They have everybody right there for the action. Unless if, since it's on next gen, like I remember the old Battlefront would have a ton of computers going around and stuff like that. But on... I guess current gen PS4 I know can handle 32 on 32 battles, and if they do that, that'll be insane. And then you'll have like the walkers and the ships flying around. And uh, dude, the, when they showed that you could be in the in the uh, the at at oh at at the at yes. at, I love calling it at so yeah at at and then the other ones the walker it's, and the you, uh, you could do that in the second battlefront. Did you ever play that one? Yeah, you could, but like. This looked much more polished and yeah, yeah. This looked like when if you were ever in the ATAT in the second Battlefront, yes, it was back. so slow, it was so terrible. Just, just all right. Tell me that you will not be pumped for playing the Ewok level when you get to jump onto those speeders and fly through all the trees. That is going to be so much fun. I'm, I'm more excited about when we both get in like the snow. I don't know what it is the. The snow. Oh, by the way, you know what I was a little disappointed about in the snow level? They didn't have any of those like creatures for you to ride around on. Yeah, they used see. to have all the tauntauns. Yeah, the tauntauns. Where were the tauntauns? That was so much fun. <laughs> they were. Um... <laughs> what did you Super... say for? Uh, I was excited for us to get into a thing together and for me to crash it. <laughs> yes, I was going to say trying to fly around an ATAT. I can just see us yelling at each other. Trying to fly yeah. around it or Hook try to the shoot thing. the leg. Yeah. Hook the thing. <laughs> it's like go left, go left. That's gonna be uh, a lot of fun. The first time me and Neil played Battlefield Hardline, we uh, we were playing the beta last uh, <laughs> uh, summer, and uh, we hopped into a helicopter. And Neil goes uh, just as we're taking off, like we literally like the rotors were just spinning. I was driving. And Neil goes, have you ever driven a helicopter before? And I went, nope. <laughs> and then as soon as I got it into the air, it just flipped upside down and blew up. Like, just like, immediately. <laughs> we, didn't, we, didn't even, we didn't even make it 10 feet off the ground. And I, I, I must have thought the throttle was the analog stick or whatever. It, and it it's just so like, woo! Uh, it's just, helicopter it controls, dead. if you don't know them, but it's I, so confusing. If you remember, in the second beta, I got pretty good at doing the helicopter. Yeah, like once you get the controls, you can get a handle on it. You did get yeah. pretty good. But I can't wait. 
for like the and then like they showed that you could be like the tie fighters like shooting people oh my god i remember battlefront 2 they had space battles and it was really cool i hope they do that more in this game and flesh them out a little bit because mm-hmm. they were like they were pretty standard they're like fly from one ship go to the other ship land then you're taking points again it would be yeah. really cool if you could like land on the outside and like there was points on the outside so you're fighting in space a little bit and ships were coming down from the top or like there was turrets to get in i think if they do the space battles well it could be a, a whole other game mode that's you know what i that they'll it'll be a dlc that's what they're gonna yes, do it will but uh another thing i really like about battlefront i, I really love the gameplay i was cool to see that the heroes are back you know you could be Luke yeah and people were worried about that they thought it would it wouldn't do well but it looked it, well, looked, it looked okay it looked okay I like that they made it like a dumb old movie where like when you hit people like sparks fly off and everything <laughs> and, and they do like the dumb fall like they would in yeah. the movies. It's, it's that Star and, Wars feel. And the music. Oh man, the music is so good. That's like the best part. Uh, I think this game is going to be huge when it comes out. It's gonna oh, it's going to be like, so big. This game is going to make a killing. Absolutely. Think about it and just... You know, on top of that, think about all the DLC. Like, EA is just licking their chops. They're just every week is going to be a new five dollars for like this Jedi. Just every mm-hmm. week, there's going to be that. Oh man. Uh, uh so what else? Is there anything else in EA no, or should that, that was that was EA. All right, then we have Ubisoft. Ubi, I did not watch until when I was waiting. I, watched. This, I was doing some stuff. Um, I can say we didn't guess much for this one. We, we said guess. Assassin's Creed, obviously. The Division, yes. Siege, yes. And then we said some Far Cry 4 DLC, which did not no, happen. Did not happen. I was actually really surprised about that. They didn't I even talk about Far Cry 4. Yeah, it's, I guess it's just in the past at this point. Um, um, so what else was they had Just Dance 2016? Oh, super pumped for that one. You know I love Just Dance. Uh, Jason Derulo came out and sang. Oh, you gotta be kidding! Um, no, that, he did. Oh my god. Uh, the, what else? The the, the siege the, siege looked good. They siege they confirm, looks incredible. They confirmed that terrorist hunt is coming back. Um, um, Assassin's Creed Syndicate looks like an Assassin's Creed game. I guess there was a quote which I don't have in front of me, but I guess some so uh, Ubisoft developer or executive said this is gonna be the first game. That focuses on having a crew with you, and everyone was like, "Wasn't that the whole purpose of Brotherhood?" Almost. Yeah, like the entire purpose of that has already happened, and now they're like reinventing it, which it looks uh, it looks better. Well, it's I can't tell if it actually looks better, but I assume thing, it will be. The thing I was most excited about um, was the Ghost Recon trailer at the end, which I thought that looked awesome. Looked amazing. I cannot it look, wait how that good, game. How good did that look? And I, I, I just watched that like just an hour ago. I am so pumped for that game. It's now like one of the games I, I want remember the most. last week mentioning Ghost Recon, saying you did. could they announce another Ghost Recon because it had been a while since Advanced Warfighter. Um, God, man, that game was so good. It looks like it would just be so much fun. Like you know how we had fun in Far Cry, just like raiding yeah. outposts, and that's just like a side mission. Like, oh my God, it's gonna be so much fun. And I love the I love Ghost Recon in general. I love the tactical gameplay and everything in the third person. And when I was watching it, I like the whole time I'm like, this is Ghost Recon, this is Ghost Recon. But then like a second I said, Did they reboot Mercenaries? Because remember that game Mercenaries? Yeah. That's what it looked like. And I was like, that was a pandemic game and they don't exist anymore. So maybe they bought the IP. But then I was like, no, it's gotta be Ghost Recon, right? Oh, so, you know, it, it I, looked I was, ended so up good. Recon. But it, oh man, that game. <laughs> Huge, like, graphics spot. incredible, huge world, and then just gameplay-wise. Looks awesome. Like, you could just do so much stuff, and you know there's going to be so much more that they haven't showed us yet. Damn, I want that game. That's, like, out of the out of E3, that's probably one of my top three most excited things. Yeah, I, like, I know that's a game we're both going to get at launch, unless there's something crazy happens, it's like, whatever. And we're just going to have an absolute blast playing. Like, that's a game you know, if I get this game, I will have fun playing. Oh, absolutely. You know what's funny, though, like... I'm thinking now. So you're you're getting Siege, right? Definitely, right? Yes. Okay. You're gonna get Battlefront, right? Yes. Okay. So there's two FPSs. Now, normally I would say, you know what? I'll wait on COD, but it's a Treyarch COD. That's my favorite <laughs> COD. 
that's also a first person shooter. For me, there's Fallout 4. That's <laughs> an, I wouldn't call that a shooter, but it's first person yeah. you know, shooting RPG. That's four within like two months of each other. I, I feel like I'm going to get burnt out. I think I think I'm going to not get caught at launch. I think I, I'll just I was I think say. make Battlefront my uh yeah, my first same person. Here. I usually don't get caught at launch. It was the past two that did it. I always get caught at launch. It used to be it used to be a little Christmas gift for me. I always Here's the thing. Be. Like I'm going to get Battlefront, which comes out a week before Fallout 4, and then Fallout 4 is going to come out and I'm going to have like <laughs> one of the hardest decisions to make every time I have free time. Do I play Fallout 4, which I've waited forever for? Do I play Battlefront, which I've also waited forever? <laughs> I think it's going to be a typical, like, you'll play 45 minutes of Battlefront with me, and then you go and then you go play Fallout yeah. for, the, for the rest like, of your life. Yeah, for, oh, dude, it's going to be so good. I'm so happy Uncharted was kicked to 2016. Wow, but same. then, like, The Division... Like the division looks awesome too, and that comes out in March. It looks it looks amazing. I always forget that it's like an online game. It's not it's not an MMO, right? It's just no, it's just like you know random people, kind of like Destiny. Yeah, which is yeah, which is so cool. I mean, damn it, I I don't think it's gonna work as cool as too they many were... games, Neil. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna work as cool as they were making it seem with like oh, you're going to team up with people. I think no one is ever gonna trust anybody, and no, you just, just shoot them. you're just gonna immediately shoot them. Unless they might have like a non PvP mode, which I think people would really work together in. But just the story, if it has a good story element, at least campaign, it would just be fun to play with people. Like oh, that would yeah. be another game that we would play and just have a, a ton of fun of just like exploring and like we would we would be the people that just see other players and try to take them out. I know we would because we're dicks. Yeah. We know we'd help them and then steal their stuff. Just like I like that the trailer promoted that. It's like, yeah, help people and then shoot them in the back and take their stuff. So good, but the but the real the real thing we want to talk about three games that Ubisoft is really excited. But we want excited. we want to talk about Wild Just Run, because. which is the expansion for the crew. Ugh, fuck off, man! It's more towers than you could ever fuck climb. Fuck off, Alan! <laughs> the game we yeah. really want to talk about is For Honor. Yeah, For Honor looked awesome. I, I was so pumped when I saw that. It looked and, like, like um, Neil was watching this, and I was like, "Neil, like this game looks so cool." I was texting him. That game looked awesome. It it looked for the, it was probably my favorite cinematic trailer of all of E3. Yep. It was definitely the most intense, the most fun to watch. Um, the game, I need to see more gameplay before I can. It looks it looks like a lot of fun. It could more be awkward, like it could be like. I don't know. I have to see more about the game. I like the idea of it. Um, if anything, medieval. What, what's the game called? Medieval Warfare on medieval. Steam is really popular. So clearly, they're trying to capitalize on that. They're just doing like typical AAA God, developer. It, I want to have medieval battles online. <laughs> but that would be really fun. Like if we were playing together, and we were just like. Oh man, that, that game's gonna be really fun too. I'm loving all the co-op stuff that they're dishing out, and all the stuff you can play with people. Sit on my face, for honor. <laughs> uh. That's gonna be that's gonna be a ton of fun. Um, I guess the other things worth mentioning: there's gonna be a new South Park game. Yeah, I mean, I didn't play the first one, but I didn't like... either. But people loved it, and so that's gonna be cool. Um, let's see, what else do I care about? That's I don't know. We talked Tom Clancy games were the huge one. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much it. I think there's a Trials Fusion expansion. That's yeah, there was like no one like ugh, that was so bad. <laughs> yeah, that that that's pretty much UB. I would say. Um, um. All right, let's do Nintendo next because we have Sony that we still need to talk about. So, what do we predict for Nintendo? I know that my big bold prediction was wrong, so you could just put that out there. You just have I forget, what, was, what was your big bold prediction because it's hard that, to read this. That it would cut to black and then they'd have a little thing about Zelda. Oh yeah, I do have Zelda would be shown. So I have I just have like a list of Star Fox, correct? Yes. Yoshi's Woolly War, War World. Yes. Um, Smash character, which was technically before kind that- of. They came out, but that was before I knew that there's a separate thing. So yeah, uh, Fire Emblem, yes, yes, which they showed. Bravely Second, no, they did not show. Did did Square show that? I didn't watch Square's. No, they did not. There was no Bravely Second. That's really Second. interesting. There was I other things. That, I, we, I, we were, that, makes, that, that makes me kind of concerned. That's not coming out till next fall. Then 
I don't. Yeah, I think they got other things to focus. Well, it's we'll, coming we'll, out. It's it's out in Japan. I think I think it's a huge game to localize. And because I think they, because the first one came out two and a half years before it came out in uh, America because of localization. Yeah, I, th- I think that's it. I think it's just a huge project. Uh, I need, which I, I need, I, I, I need I, Bravely Second. You have to play that game. I have Bravely Falter sitting upstairs, and I need... Uh, that game is so good. I, lo- I was playing it. I was like, I love this game. I love the music. I love the characters. I love the fighting, and I just stopped. Ring a bell. Everything about Ring-a-bell. that game. I love Ring a bell. I, uh, I like, want to play that game again. I got it. That's a game... Cause I, oh man, I gotta play that. Um, the other things we talked about, we said some new 3D Mario game would be no, announced. That's incorrect. Which it's not 3D. Whoa! It's the paper one. We said 3D, but it that we meant it's that it wasn't. It's the paper and uh, Mario Luigi mashup, which kind of looks cool. But yeah, but I think when we said 3D, we meant like. Yeah, I meant Galaxy and one of those games oh man i i I was thinking we were talking more like it's not gonna be like a uh derivative of another game like this looks like a kind of a new mario game but it will get like half a point half point point. splatoon they didn't talk about splatoon at all they mentioned splatoon i was so surprised and then we said a mario sunshine remake nope which i was also really surprised i thought that it was gonna be a given uh but important importantly there was puppets and lots of them Oh, that was so. Their <laughs> intro was so funny when when they open the door and Reggie is like Nintendo sixty three, <laughs> Nintendo sixty four. <laughs> oh my god, I love I love Nintendo's ability to make fun of itself. Like one time in a Nintendo Direct, Reggie fills a me said that his body was ready for a new game or whatever, and they keep bringing that back because that's what he said after he's done doing the push ups. He's like, "My body is ready for our digital event." <laughs> It's so funny. I, I like as I was watching it, I was kind of going in and out of it, and I was like, I was like, this is so dumb. This is so dumb. It's so funny. And then, and then I texted Steve afterwards because I was watching the Sony one, and I was like, this is so boring to watch. People it just is. talking. It Nintendo is. nailed it. They like yeah. you could not look away from it. You had to watch every second of it. I love what Nintendo does. I think their digital events are really like. There's never that awkward moment. You know what I mean? Of like the oh, like here's a funny joke that fell front in front of the crowd because it's yeah. pre-recorded it's so like and like not only like those jokes didn't fall flat because they were actually funny like when like it was so random like they just started turning into the star fox <laughs> characters like what the hell was going on I just, my favorite gif is when they're just walking down that yeah. hallway i love the dancing one they're, like <laughs> then they just do like interludes of just like showing them dancing to music and be like here's another world from here <laughs> it was so insane <laughs> Who came up with that? Is what I want to know. Who was like, here's what we're doing. You're all puppets. <laughs> and by the way, Miyamoto just seems like the nicest guy to hang out with in the world. He's he really always does. smiling and just like, he just like has this huge smile on his face. He's always just cracking all these jokes in <laughs> Japanese. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, so they sewed Star Fox, which um, I, at first, I was like, you know what? This needs some polish. But then I was like, you know what? Bayonetta 2 looked really bad when they first showed it graphics wise, but when it came out, it was really good. This is a Platinum doing this, which made me really excited uh, because I love Platinum. And uh, I think that their whole concept of like here on the TV is a third person view. And if you look down at the game, here's a cockpit view. I think that's really cool, actually. I do too. Um, I, I so really like, like that. Yeah, so like you can like be like, oh, I need to get like a close aim. You look down and you could like go and like move your gyroscope or whatever and get like precision aiming. So I think that's pretty cool. I love the transformations they showed of like, you know, how you could like land and it turns into a walker and all that. Uh, but I thought one of the coolest things not a lot of people were talking about that uses the game pad in a really innovative way was when they showed you like releasing that bot. And then like you had to look at the game pad to get a view from the bot. And you would like go through and like find secret areas. I thought that was really cool. I, I, um, yeah, I do too. I think that they're utilizing that the game, game pad cool. at least. That game looks cool. And I, I, it'll be, it'll be polished. I mean, just everyone's complaining about graphics. They're not going to release the game looking like that. If you look at Mario Kart 8, that game is gorgeous. It runs 60 frames per second, and it looks as good as anything that was on last gen. You know, because that's about the same comparison. So, I'm sure that that game will look good. And even so, it's Star Fox. People are yeah, going to love it. It's Star Fox, okay? And it's going to be awesome. And it looked cool. And oh. I'm gonna. I'm really excited for it. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. 
actually kind of looked kind of cool. I was never really interested in that. I liked the whole, like, I thought it was funny how you, like, eat enemies and they, like, turn into, like, a ball of yarn and you can, like, <laughs> row it and it, like, unravels and makes a platform. That's a pretty cool, like, gameplay mechanic and everything. Uh, I'm kind of burnt out on 2D platformers at this point. But, uh, although I'm burnt out on 2D platformers, I will be playing Mario Maker because that <laughs> game is insane. That... Yeah, I uh the real it made a small appearance, but the real one was of course at the Nintendo World Championships, which I ha- which I yeah. haven't watched. You just heard about it, right? I've heard about it. Apparently, Holy crazy things shit. have gone down. Oh man, there's some cool stuff people have been making. Uh, yeah, I totally believe it. So that's really exciting. Uh, then they had this really cool announcement today. They're like, "Hey, like we're just gonna give you like we'll give you." five every time you sign in we're like here's the five highest rated water levels go play them and like it's just a never-ending stream of mario plus you know people are out there so like you can make levels and you can uh, connect them into worlds uh so pretty much you know people are going to be out there they're going to make full mario games like eight worlds with fleshed out levels so that's that's really cool i think that's going to be uh a really great thing for them the only thing is that this is a good point they can't make another 2D Mario after this, you know, because like this is the end all of 2D Mario's. If they make another one, it has to be on the 3DS where this isn't available. If they make one on the Wii U, someone could just be like, "I'm gonna copy all the levels," and this way you don't have to pay for it. They'll they'll come up with a new mechanic. This is the same thing people say about Trials Fusion. They were like, "There's you can't do anything after Trials Evolution because everyone has already made it." And then they came out with Trials Fusion and everyone still bought it and you still make crazy levels. They'll just, they need to come up with a crazy new mechanic of some sort that's not in that game. Otherwise, you're right. They can't, if they keep the same Mario 2D platformer or whatever, it's not going to work. They just have to do, and they will. They always come up with something you don't expect. So, I thought that looked really cool though. I'm, I'm real, I'm, that comes out on uh, September 11th. So, that's coming out pretty soon actually. Um, what else? What else? What else? Uh, Metroid Prime. It, Metroid Prime. I actually thought that game looked fun. Uh, like, they, People were if pissed. They, if they didn't put the Metroid name on it, it would be fine. Yeah. I read a interview with the producer today who was like, you know what? Like, I don't care because, like, you know, I don't do 2D Metroids. I only do the 3D first-person shooter ones, and this is what I wanted to make, and Nintendo gave me the money for it, so you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> I don't Good. understand why everyone's like, like... It's going to be fun. It's a Nintendo first-party game. you got to be excited about those. They're usually pretty well done. People are I, entitled. I thought, I thought it was cool. I mean, to get like a first-person Metro, even though it's a spin-off, but the first-person shooter on the 3DS, which is based in the Metroid universe, that you can play online four-person co-op on a handheld, that's an awesome concept. So I, I'm actually excited for that. It looks like it'll be like a $15 eShop title, which is perfect for that. Yeah, um, it, it looks fun. I get why people like they want a Metroid game. So anytime the name comes up, yep. they get mad. Which I'll I'll kind of talk about with Sony because they got kind of there's a lot of trolling yeah. going on with Sony or not Sony next, Square. Next I mean, one is a game that I want to play with you, Neil. Is that that co-op Zelda game? I think that looked awesome. It, it reminds <laughs> me of Four Swords. Yeah, kinda. yeah, but like online co-op with friends. Like we could just—it's just a co-op Zelda dungeon game, and not even dungeons. They said there's an overworld too, so like it's pretty much like they took a link between worlds and it's like here you can play co-op now. I think that'd be really fun to play together, like solving the puzzles and stuff. I think so, so too. I, th- I, think, I think I think we will play that. I really I, I really would like to play that if you would like to play that. <laughs> Are you asking any- me to play the game with yeah, you, Steve? I have I have no one else to play that with, and like sure we'll have to get like one rando in there, but I'm sure he'll be fine. Oh, uh, we'll we'll deal with them. Yeah, it looks it looks like a game that I would absolutely like to play. It's that just, I got to play my 3DS, man. There's so many. I thought I would play it in the summer, but now I got so many games. I can't I can't help it. You you actually you what do you have now? Well, now done with the it's on the Payday 2 and uh Final Fantasy 14, which is going to take up not, a lot of time. You're not getting Batman. Not, not getting is, Batman. So I'm pretty much last, which is the last big release until September. Yeah, so I'm well, going to We'll be playing a lot of Rocket Cars when it comes out. Oh, Rocket League. Absolutely. But besides but besides that, yeah, I might I might finally get some Bradley. Play Bradley the Fall. I just I need I need finish. To... First of all, you're on the final boss of a link between worlds, so just finish that. L- listen. I know me and that's never going to happen. I've beaten <laughs> that game in my mind. 
I've um, beaten it and I've moved past it. What else do I want to say about Nintendo? I talked about the 3DS games. Fire so Emblem? Yeah, Fire Emblem. Uh, it's not called If. It's called Fates. Cool. That game will be awesome. First Fire Emblem was unbelievable. You also have to play that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I will. I, I love that game too. Um, what else? I'm trying to think. Animal I'm Crossing. Sure. That was Home such Designer. a the two Animal Crossing games were such look a terrible. Look horrible. Happy Home Designer look uh, is whatever. Like that's a game for girls who are you know make up a ton of the Animal Crossing fan base and for kids. Cool. Like that's fine. Yeah. We one is inexcusable. <laughs> what? Like and the way they presented it, it's like oh my god, it was Wii U. But someone made a really good point. They took the time now to make all the assets for Animal Crossing on Wii U. The Animal Crossing Wii U game cannot be far behind. All they have to do now is make a game around it. They've made all the graphics of the trees and the you know like the town hall and everything. That's all done now. All they have to do is do all the other side stuff. So that game is probably in development. It I agree. makes no sense not to release one. So uh, we'll see. And then uh, so I did the 3DS games. Oh and. <laughs> Out of nowhere, Mario Tennis is something yeah. I'm really excited for. I love the Mario Tennis games. As long as it has the RPG elements of, like, N64 one or whatever, then I'm in. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I, I loved Mario Tennis 64. I didn't play much of the newer one, but I do like Mario Tennis a lot. Um, I'm trying to think of anything. They didn't really talk about the next system. They just mentioned it. No. And next, they, they were not. like, oh, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll, more, well, more on that later. That- they said that they won't be ta- – like, when they first mentioned it, like, listen, NX, NX exists, and uh, it'll be coming one day, but we're not going to be talking about it until 2016 because we want to focus this year. You know what I mean? I think – So that, that's Nintendo, though. That, that's yeah. pretty much it, yeah. I, w- I would agree. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles Xenoblade later Chronicles this year. Looks cool. looks cool. That comes out in uh, December. I, I bet you'll like Probably. that. That's kind of that, the game that seems like you would that, like. First of all, that game looks incredible. For being on the Wii U, that game looks incredible. The graphics on it, yeah, wow. It's, it's, a huge, it's a huge, beautiful world, and I was playing on the Wii. I remember I was like, this looks awful. I can't, I can't do well, it. Well, that's, that's a whole new... I know, I totally understand, but I'm saying like back then, on the mm-hmm. Wii, people considered it a beautiful game because of just the environment, and it's going to look that much better on um, the Wii U. So it that game actually kind of reminds me of um of uh, uh Horizon, just like those big like metallic like dinosaur looking things out in these open worlds. Yeah, a little bit. Um, before we get to Sony though, can I just talk about Square for a bit? I guess. Yeah, mention Square. Just you know, well, it's because we gotta talk about Kingdom Hearts, but of course, there's like Tomb Raider, Just Cause Three. Um, Hitman, which people are really excited about Hitman. I've never really liked those games. Just Cause, I'm going to try out this time. Tomb Raider, I'll play that eventually. I love Tomb Raider. Um, they're doing a Lara Croft, Lara Croft, Lara, sorry, Lara. Lara! <laughs> Lara Croft um, Go, which is the same type of, there was a Hitman Go for mobile games not that long ago. Hitman Go! And people loved it for whatever reason. I, they just I abs- played it. Did you I, like it? No, I thought it was dumb. Really? Well, people loved it, so now they're doing a Lord Croft one. They say they're going to love it. Um, there was De- Deus Ex. Deus Ex, whatever. Deus Ex, yes. And Deus Ex. Deus Ex. And people care about that. The important games. So, I never played the original Nier. Did you? Nope. It's apparently another one of those games that came out and no one really cared much about it at the time, but then it became like a cult classic. And so the new game that looks really, really cool is actually um, uh, the next near game. I don't know if it's a direct sequel or what's going on. There's not much about it. But it looks really cool. This is the dude that came up in the, in the moon costume. There was tons of jokes about how it was the third day of Majora's Mask and the world was coming to an end. And then it got weird. And then it got kind of cool again. And then uh, I wish I knew the guy's name who did it. But the main... Producer, developer, executive, whatever, behind the Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts was just trolling every step of the way. And Mm -hmm. that he just, he came out and was like, hey, here's a game you want to see. And then they just showed the Final Fantasy VII trailer again. And he's like, all right, here's what you want to see. And then it was, um, 
Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key, which is just a mobile game. Okay. And then he was like, all right, we know what you really want to see. You want to see this. Oh, hey, who's that in the audience? And then he talked for like a 20 seconds about some guy in the audience. And it was like, all right, seriously, mm. here's Kingdom Hearts 3. But it was just the fact that Square totally knew what they were doing. And people are now wondering if they really did that on purpose. The fake port of Final Fantasy, not the fake port, it's a real port of Final Fantasy 7, but it wasn't the remake. Because clearly they had the remake in the works at the time. They wouldn't have just come up with that in a year. And so people are starting to think that. But I know you watched the Kingdom Hearts trailer. What are your thoughts? Whew. Let me tell you, man. Need a towel after it? That looked so good. It looks amazing. We're not seeing that game for three years, though. Yeah, definitely. What did, what did I say? I said it was going to be Final Fantasy 15 next year, Final Fantasy 7 remake the year after that, and then Kingdom Hearts. Maybe, yeah. yeah, that's my guess. Maybe Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy 7 remake Switch. Maybe, but I, probably That not. would make more sense, considering that we initially saw Kingdom Hearts two years ago. Yeah, that's... I. I know they, they're trying to get Final Fantasy 15 out first. They're definitely going to do that, get that done. And then I think they might go Kingdom Hearts and then the remake for Final Fantasy 7. But now they got nearer. I don't understand. Like, why does it take so long? Well, I was telling Neil, like, this is crazy, okay? The, the last Kingdom Hearts 2, like, I know there's been plenty of spinoffs and everything since, but Kingdom Hearts 2 came out in 2005. Okay, I was 13 years old. If you told me when I was 13, I was going to have to wait until I was 27 to play Kingdom Hearts 3, I would kill someone. And now, yeah. by the time Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, I will have been alive for more time without Kingdom Hearts 3 <laughs> than with Kingdom Hearts 3. <sighs> Oh my god. This like it's crazy how some games do that. Like take Final Fantasy 15. That game was originally announced back in 2006. Said to be the next game after Final Fantasy 13 or come along with it. That's two Final Fantasies ago, Steve. That's like a lifetime. That's a decade in video games. But it's just like as we'll talk about this with Sony too, it for whatever reason the de- not the developers but the people are finally catching up to like what people really have been waiting for. Like Kingdom Hearts 3, everybody wants it. I think that's going to be one of the best-selling games of all time. Yes, dude, it and will be. I cannot wait. It, it looks amazing. It looks... The music, it's, it's so nostalgic at this point. I wish they opened with Simple and Clean because they would have <sighs> just killed it. Could you imagine? <sighs> it also was... <laughs> if You didn't see the conference, but it, w- it wasn't like a big presentation it was just like a room of like i don't know a couple dozen people like it was it was a very small thing so i think next year they're gonna have this huge crazy conference like microsoft and sony who just go out of control but anything else from square they show (laughs) they showed a new ip from a new uh developer they only showed pictures and a light piano sound but it's going to be a totally new rp from a JRPG from a new developer, so people are excited for that. But now, Steve... Oh, good. So that'll come out in 2022. <laughs> now, Steve, we're going to get to what we really want to talk about. Sony. Okay, what were my predictions? Here's the pro- Here's the issue about that. That's on the back side of the piece of paper. Oh, shit. And on the back side, the back side of the piece of paper, I can't see. As Steve knows, because I left it at work, but I happen to have a picture of it on my phone. So... I only have, I don't have the Sony predictions. Well, I know that I predicted that it would open up with the new IP from Gorilla, and I was so close. You, it was the second game to open up. It was called so Horizon if Zero the Dawn. Fucking Last Guardian <laughs> had just been like every other conference since 2006 and not been there. I would have been right. You would have been right, and I like to point out that I did say the Last Guardian was going to be there. Yes, you did. And. I know a lot of people did because the rumors were still going on. And the other, I know that there was a couple of predictions. We said there was going to be No Man's Sky. Um, yep. I'm trying to remember. I I said that co- I said the COD exclusivity deal. So I I want to say, um, we called that Media Molecule was going to do a game, didn't we? Or am I making it up? No, we did, but that doesn't even look like a game. So yeah, but we knew that they would do something. Um, 
we knew that we knew it would end on Uncharted. We called that. Um, I can't I can't think of the things we were wrong about. I'm sure there were things that we were kind of wrong. So about. let's just talk about them in order. Last Guardian. What did you think about the trailer? I think it looks it's amazing. Actually, the gameplay. I thought it looked amazing too. A lot of people were hating on it online. Here's the thing. This game is going to get a crazy amount of hate no matter what. Because that's just how people are and they've been waiting for it. And it's not going to live up to what they've been waiting for. I do have concerns about it. So do you remember when Ico, like, you would have to get that girl in the perfect position for her to interact with the environment properly. I remember, like, really struggling with it and it would be so frustrating. And actually with Shadows of the Colossus, too, I didn't like the controls. Like any game, Ico and Shadows, I the controls really frustrated me, which I got over it because I just really liked the games. And I was kind of I saw it working better in this, like the way the kid was running in the old games. Like it for whatever reason, it didn't work that well, and I could kind of almost see that. But I was seeing the bird dog thing, mm-hmm. like he had to get in the exact positions, and I'm worried that might not work super well. And that's what they said. Um, the director behind it was like, the reason it's taking so long is one, it was like, they were making it for the PS3 and the PS4 came out. They're like, oh, let's just put it to the PS4. And they were saying they couldn't show gameplay because the dog's AI was not working properly. That's like the biggest hurdle they have to overcome. And so I'm worried that it's going to be, he could ruin the entire game. If, yes. if you're trying to call him to like a spot and he's just not coming or he's like just turning in circles or whatever, that could be awful. But everything besides that, it looks just like an ICO game weird child boy thing that's like a, something and then a cr- crazy creature and you're like in a temple it looks it looks amazing to me i know i'm gonna love it what about you i thought it looked awesome i thought that i was like enthralled by it like i couldn't look away um and i think that it'd be like that game just you could you watch that show and you're like this is a game that's gonna have an awesome story that i'm gonna be fully invested into so and the thing I'm excited about is that I don't know if a lot of people know this they probably do that Ico and Shadow of the classes are actually connected. Yes. Because the way Shadows ends is you the boy that grows horns and then that's what they sacrifice they always sacrifice that boy in Ico. And so I want to see if this game's connected somehow. I'm sure it will be. It better be. Like that I love universes connecting like that. Neil, now that you said that, though like ah, oh, we got to delay it cuz Neil wants it to be connected. <laughs> oh man um and it's gonna be out in 2016 yeah what do you think like early or late late definitely late absolutely i think i think it's not ready yet but they just really want to get it out there for e3 Mm -hmm. me too because they it was they essentially showed one clip of it in one location you know what I mean? Like they didn't show any new trailers or anything to it. They just showed one gameplay of a very set thing they could have built for yep. the demo. So, but I'm also I am really excited for the new Gorilla game, Horizon. Zero. Yes, that looked amazing. It it looks like I don't even know what it really is. It looks like you were just. It looks like it could be an open world game, and an Which apocalyptic, and you just like. I, it's got to have a cool story. Like it, it look, it's such an intriguing world. It's got to have a cool story. Like how are robots just roaming the wild? Remind me, did you ever play Enslaved? Yes, Loved it reminded it. me of that. I did too. That game came out of nowhere, and that game was great. Um, it very much reminded me of Enslaved. It did. Even even the way it looked a little bit, like the aesthetics, not just the end of the world thing, but just like yeah, the aesthetics and the aesthetic. And like she was kind of cracking jokes, so it wasn't the super depressing. Mm-hmm. world like you know i kind of like that i kind of like when it's like a, an apocalyptic world but it's not like your heart isn't just like being ripped out at every moment at some terrible yeah. thing you're witnessing it's kind of like oh yeah look there's life it's beautiful there's a robot dinosaur that you're shooting arrows into it's awesome so you mean like your heart being ripped out like playing the last of us yes or hearthstone oh god <laughs> hearthstone <laughs> um besides that would, do you have any more thoughts on it? What do you think it's going to be? I just be? thought it looked awesome. I think it'll be an open-world third-person adventure game. Uh, the, they already said there's going to be no online element to it, so that's cool. cool. I'm just fine with that because that usually means the story is going to be yep. awesome. Usually. Um, yeah, I thought it looked awesome. I mean, that fight with that giant thing was cool with so. all the different like uh, 
all the different uh, arrows that she used. I thought it looked cool. Looks so um, cool. Um, besides yeah. that, I guess we get, there's a couple things we can go over quickly because we don't – at least I don't care about Street Fighter Five. I know people love it. I know it's a yeah, huge deal. It's just coming to Sony. Although the only thing I do care about Street Fighter Five is that I got the Ryu – uh, DLC <laughs> for Smash Brothers, and I am so good at this Ryu. Steve was freaking out that he wouldn't be able to download it. He's like, I just have to get it tomorrow. And like 30 minutes later, he had it. Well, yeah, because Nintendo, uh, like I was telling you, Nintendo loves, they're the only developer or, or whatever, uh, console got people company, that like whatever. the company, yeah, that'll work, uh, that are like, hey, like it's available now. They're the only people that say that, but they're also the only people that don't have the servers <laughs> to uh, put up with it. So, I, you know, they're like, hey, Smash, available now. So first, I had to somehow connect to download the update to Smash. Then I had to connect to the store and download the characters themselves. It was a nightmare. Um, but I got it. Yeah. That, I mean, that sucks. Uh, I have a similar story somewhat about Final Fantasy XIV, which I might talk about quickly later on. But um, No Man's Sky gameplay was shown. Um, yep. I still don't know what that game is. I don't is. know what it is. I'm. It looks cool. I really, really, really want it to do well. I don't know why. Like, I feel like I just want this developer to do really well. Yeah. But I don't want to get bored. I don't want to just, like, walk around three plants and go, okay, what do I do now? Do I just keep walking around? Is that the it's point? It's a story, right? The, the coolest thing to it that I think is revealed, I read it somewhere, is that everyone explores the same universe. So it's, yeah. it's one universe, which is huge still, absolutely huge. But people were already saying, we have to make a community. We have to map this world together. So that would be cool. That would be cool because you know people on Reddit are going to, like, make a graph. And they're going to be like, this planet's made of ice and here's on this. And, like, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the community of it, I think. The game itself, oh. I'm not too sure about. Me either. But, I mean, I still think that's a ways off. Yeah. Uh, so. um, <sighs> it's, just, it's so ambitious. Yeah, it's it's I want that's why I want it to do well, but I'm afraid it's not going to. It's that game to do really well. That game has to be a Morpheus game because if you can, if you Ooh, can take that, that ex- cool. if you can take that experience and make it so you are actually exploring the planets, suddenly the gameplay doesn't need to be complex. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah, you're right. People will be happy just walking around and like looking around, and being like, "This is insane." So, go on. Uh, the, all right. So, medium molecule. I didn't really watch this. I kind of saw glimpses of it. You might have to explain it better. Um, I can't explain it. I have no it's, idea what it is. It's basically... You, you can supposedly just make anything. You make your own, like, machine amount of video. And it, it, it doesn't look good to me. People are going to do... If, if it's making your own video, people will do amazing things with it. I don't care about it. It's not a game. Yeah. Like, it looked boring. As far as the game goes, it, there was no gameplay. Yeah. It's just watch people's dreams. People are unimpressed. They'll have to do something more. Um, a game that you texted me you were really excited about, which I've been kind of paying attention to for a little Fire while. Watch. Firewatch. That game looked awesome. Looks awesome. I was watching, there was an extended gameplay of 15 minutes, like a couple months ago I watched, where like, you're just walking around, you're looking at things. There were people drinking, so you like pick up the beer cans, like, hey, people, you can't drink or whatever. And then it's like getting dark and you're getting back to your tower and it's getting darker and darker. And then you get up to your tower and it's all smashed up and broken into. And you're like, who's out here? And you th- and you, you also, you see a shadow. You see like a figure. You're like walking up. It's like dark and you see like a figure on this mountain above you. And you look there and it like walks away. So like there's something around Some, you. Something you. is out there. And so it's like terrifying. It's like this really common game during the day. And just like, oh yeah, you know, and you just like chat with this other person over the radio with like really natural flowing conversations that I'm really impressed by. And then there's like this creepy element to it. And the whole, I like the idea of just like you look across and you see the other tower and like, you know, a person's over there and that it's just you two in this like, what is it? Wyoming wilderness. Oh man. Mm-hmm. It looks so interesting. It looked great. It looks so good. Oh, but Steve, Steve, let me tell you. Yeah. <sighs> Destiny, the Taken King, oh. was officially announced. Dude, thank God. Oh my God, I was so worried. What that we Destiny need was gonna be there. What we need is more Destiny. Yeah. So Assassin's Creed Syndicate, whatever. More Assassin's Creed. I might not get this game. I'm over a Unity. I yeah. 
I don't, I don't think I'm going to get it, actually. Um, the World of Final Fantasy, no one has any idea what it is. Like, literally, no one knows what this is. It's so creepy. Like, I don't understand. It just... I People can't explain it. It's It might be on... It might be an MMO kind of game. It might not be. It might just be play online with friends. And no one has any idea. It doesn't matter because a Final Fantasy VII remake was announced. And this blew everyone's minds. I've been waiting forever for this because I've tried playing Final Fantasy VII. You know I really like Final Fantasy. Mm-hmm. Cannot get past the graphics. Cannot do it. I just like... I. I tried multiple times. I don't get very far. So this is exactly what I'm waiting for. People are hating on it. People love it, and then other people are hating on it. Because apparently yeah, there's really yeah. weird... There's always people that are like, well, I'd rather, you know, this money just goes towards new games. Yeah, and then other people are like, it's not going to be the same. And I guess they were describing some scenes, and, like, the scenes where, like, he rides on a dolphin, and they're like, just picture that in 1080p. Like, they, they were just saying it's going to look a little absurd. Mm-hmm. But the director has come out the producer, I always forget. And he was more or less just like, we, we, we are remaking some aspects. Because he was he was just straight up like, some things aren't going to work. It can't be just a complete recreation. It has, or a complete update. It has to be recreated in some way. So I'm so excited for this. I don't think it's going to come out until 2018, sadly. At yeah. least. I, I can't see it. That, that's a ways off. It is, but at least it's not... 2005 to 2015 or whatever Kingdom Hearts was. You're going to have to tell me about what this Shunmei game is because I've never heard of it and apparently people... Shenmue, whatever. Shenmue were two games that released on the Dreamcast about this guy who works in a fishing village and I've never played them but like apparently the stories are very, very... For the time, they were very, very in-depth and very, you know, heartfelt and, like, movie-esque, kind of. Um, and it's, like, a crazy game. Like, some of the gameplay would just be, like, you working at the fish docks, like, working a forklift and stupid stuff like that. But people really liked them because the stories were so good. And two ends on a cliffhanger. Oh, so they've been waiting then, a long time. Then the Dreamcast got canceled. And <laughs> Sega stopped making stuff because this was originally a Sega game. Yeah. Years went by without any, like, oh, Shenmue 3, I need Shenmue 3, I need Shenmue 3. So this is a huge deal for those people, that this is finally coming out. It was kickstarted, it was funded. Uh, Sony is providing the initial funding on top of the kickstarted money. So it'll be PS4 and PC, apparently. Um, it's just a huge deal based on that. It's like the conclusion to a huge series you know that like people it's like if it's, mass it's like if mass effect one and two came out and three never came out to close the story okay and then like 12 years later it came out <laughs> yeah it's it's huge and like you said people were mad that they were saying why does why does it need a kickstarter sony came out and was like no we're funding like 90 percent of this game and they were like the kickstarter was the sole purpose of it was to show how much the fans want it and it was kind of like a marketing strategy to be like we can then go to the board and be like, look, look how fast this was fu- funded. I think it set a new world record, two million in like, I don't know, 24 hours or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it is funded. It's going to get made. People are ecstatic. When you when you toss up The Last Guardian, uh, the Final Fantasy VII remake, and this game, people were going insane. And then Call of Duty came up and literally no one at Sony cared about it because it was after those three announcements. And like Steve said very wisely, that it's not about Sony, it's about Xbox not having it. So it's not about Sony having it, it's about Xbox not having it, more or less, if that makes sense. But I didn't. I actually haven't watched any any Call of Duty or anything. I, you told me that it's a four-player campaign co-op, which I like. That would be really yeah. fun, but I, it's, it feels like it's a Call of Duty. That's about it. It's Call of Duty, man. Uh, and again, like we were saying before, like I don't know if I'll get this one at release, which is crazy for me because I lo- I love me some COD. Yeah, I like you know we're gonna get it, you know we're gonna like it, unless if it's Ghost, we like Triarch, we think it's good. The it's campaign, so co-op campaigns would be we, fun. We played so much Ghosts, and we hated it so much. We um, like playing games that we complain about, like Hearthstone and Ghosts. <laughs> Hearthstone is a good game though. Ghost was yeah. not. We just didn't have anything else. Um, yes. Yeah, sh- after that, Disney Infinity, whatever. 
Um, Star Wars Battlefront survival mode was announced there in Sony, which is cool, which is another cool thing. Wave and horde modes are very popular. And then it ended on Uncharted 4, which people were complaining because they're like, oh, it's Uncharted, whatever, we know this is coming out, which that's like Steve called them entitled, which they are because they're like, oh, we know this game is going to be given to us, basically. We don't want to see anything about it. I love seeing anything Uncharted related. And I was ecstatic to see new footage. Mm-hmm. And because I, I'm, I mean, and they showed it like that's, if you pay attention to it, you see like when he's hiding behind sandbags and they get shot, the sand starts leaking out of it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, ex- you know, like explosions and like the, the physics, they're showing off like how amazing the game looks kind of thing. Like I don't, the whip or whatever is the grapple. I don't know. It's, it's getting closer and closer to Indiana Jones, but I don't think it was as good as last year's gameplay demo when he was like fighting between all those like cliffs or whatever. That was impressive, but. How awkward... Do you watch this live, right? Yes, I did. How awkward was it when the controller stopped working? Oh, dude, it was so funny. Um, I just thought it was like the, the controller was probably dead or something. But it wasn't awkward. It just kind of happened for like five minutes or so. It was five so, minutes? It was that long? Uh, I thought five, it was like 30 seconds. Like five seconds. Yeah, yeah it was fine. Okay. It went away pretty quick. All right, yeah. So, I mean, if I was them, like... I would have like 10 controllers lined up and charged for like mm-hmm. everything. Cause I, I wonder if they were just like using, I have no idea how it goes on, but I think an overall E3, there weren't that many technical glitches. No, there weren't. I was but... watching a recap video of all like the technical glitches that, and stuff that happened from like the past ones. And like did the, the premier world premiere of like guitar hero or whatever, like the guy paused the game in the middle of it and he had to like find out how to like unpause it or something like that. Like, Weird things like that, but I want I want to ask you overall, Steve, what you thought of E three this year. What are you were you happy? What are you, are you thinking? This is going to be a good year into two thousand sixteen. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of kind of on the fence about it. All right, let me ask you this because you also brought this up very wisely. Steve says very wise things sometimes. Believe it or not, yeah, don't don't listen to him on this podcast. You'll get their other opinion of it, but. There are basically no PlayStation games coming out this fall, is what I got. Besides Call of Duty. And maybe some other third-party games. Mm -hmm. Every main Sony game, like big one, is 2016 at the earliest. Is that correct, or am I missing a game somewhere? Um, As far as you know. I think that... No, you're, you're correct. Like, I think there's, a couple, like, obviously, like, you know, like, Metal Gear Solid and stuff, but those are, like, third-party games. Microsoft was coming out with games, and they were announcing, like, you can get this this fall, you can go and download this now, EA Access has this available. Like, they were doing short-term, like, right now, you can get this, you can get this, you can get this. Sony's, like, all these awesome, amazing announcements that aren't going to come out for years. Mm-hmm. So, I think what I would do, at least, is at GamesCon, I don't... Do Sony and Microsoft have press conferences at GamesCon, or is it just developers? No, they have press conferences. That's the one in Germany, right? I think so. Yeah. If I was them, I would just, like, talk about what's coming out very soon. And I think that's what they're (laughs) going to do. Because they they said they were holding some games, and they didn't want to talk about them at E3, because I think they were getting the hype up. And then at GamesCon, they're going to talk about what's coming out soon for you to get. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that would make sense. I think that um, I think that like I was saying, you it's a little disappointing, uh, just like Sony not having uh, something, you know. Like they they needed to have something. Like announcer their big their big fall game now is the Uncharted remaster. Yeah, which doesn't even have online. No, so like what else is coming out for them? I don't even know what else comes out for Sony this year. Yeah, I think I maybe maybe that's a, a strategy. It's like, look, we've been owning Microsoft basically since we've re- released. Let's focus long term. If we have a, a one, like I think it's the fourth quarter. If we have that a gap there, we'll make it work, and like we'll just yeah. we'll push towards the future kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Because you you know when any of those big games come out. Sony, like, everyone's going to buy it. Like, Sony. Did you, like, my favorite thing after E3 was seeing all the stocks. People were taking pictures of the before and after. 
Mm-hmm. And like there's a minute when Final Fantasy VII remake is announced and it just spikes like an insane <laughs> amount. Like it's that exact it's like five minutes after that, it just spikes insanely. It's funny how that works. And I think the same thing happened with Microsoft with literally I think it was backwards compatibility and it just spiked. I think it's really funny. Like I gotta remember to just do that before press conferences, before they start, and then it spikes and then just like sell. <laughs> yeah, well if it just is a really bad one, then it all goes downhill. Yeah, well, it's the stock market. Yeah, you just you playing the game, man. You live in the American dream. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I ate that. That's the sushi roll I ate today. It was so good. The American dream. The American Neil ate the American dream. <laughs> that is the American dream. Eating it. Yes, it's eating the American dream. All right. So do you have, uh, any, do you have anything else about E three? Nothing I can think of. I think that we we carried it all pretty well. I think I think so too. I think we talked about all the important stuff. I like the huge things like Street Fighter Five. Like, yeah, it's a big deal. We don't care about it, so we're not going to talk about it. Halo, Halo. We're just like, fuck it. Yeah, we don't care. We admit that they're big deals, but we don't care. So like, I didn't want to watch Microsoft at work. Um, I guess since we're, we're pushing an hour and a half here, so I'll kind of wrap. I'll kind of say what I've been playing pretty quickly. Um, okay. I started Final Fantasy fourteen. Because it was ten dollars and you get uh, thirty days free. I could not download the game forever. It took like days because it's in client and it was downloading at 0. 0.03 megabytes a second. Oh, Jesus Christ! Like it was. It said it was going to take over nine hundred minutes. Um, <laughs> finally was able to do it, and it was only going to take like twenty five minutes, like a normal download should. Um, and then they're about to patch it again. Because the a new DLC is coming out, like a huge expansion is coming out, and so I'm worried I'm going to try to log on this weekend and finally get to play it, like really play it. I've only made a character, also made a character in the server that has the lowest amount of population, so I'm going to have to redo it and put him in a new server. Mm-hmm. And besides that, I finished The Witcher. I absolutely love it. The world feels. Everyone has been saying the world feels empty once you beat it. It really does. I did all the contracts, did all the main side quests. I did all the treasure hunts that I wanted to do. And so I literally have nothing but question marks left. And okay. they're kind of like, it's not really important. Sometimes they, they reveal new quests, just a short one. But so I'm waiting. I'm hoping they're going to do a new game plus, which someone, the developer tweeted today. They're like, we're looking into it, but there's no promises. All the people are saying they said that before. And it, that's just what they say. They're kind of like, put it down before they release it. And everyone loves them. If there's a new game plus, I will absolutely play it again. If not, I think I put. Oh God, I gotta check the time of how much I put into it, and I know it's not accurate, but it's easily, easily well over fifty hours at least. Mm-hmm. Played the, played the crap out of that game. Besides that, Hearthstone, I hate it. I love it. I'll never stop playing it. Gonna play Payday Two. Have not gotten to play it yet at all this week. We'll report back Monday, and that's about it. Steve, what about you? Um, I've been playing Hearthstone, of course. Just before we, we went live on the podcast, I opened the pack I got from the arena, and I got a gold legendary, uh, Leroy Jenkins. So I was pretty happy about that. Which is extremely rare for people that don't know that. It's like a 1 in 2,000 chance per card. That's so. insane. Oh, man. It's not like winning a PS4 from Taco Bell. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, I've been playing Splatoon, which continues to be amazing. And I've been playing The Witcher 3, and I don't know if I've ever been more hot and cold on a game ever. I like, thought you didn't I'll, like anything about it. I'll do some things. I'll be like, oh, this is good. And then like, I'll do this quest I did last night where literally the only action was leading a goat from a bear. And the entire quest line took two hours of me just riding from place to place to talk to people. Like It was so annoying. Like, I would go to like the furthest part. And then they'd be like, all right, now you've talked to this person. Go back to the Baron and tell him what you know. And you have to go all the way back there. Like, yes. Even if I'm fast traveling, it's so annoying. Because this, this is the most annoying thing ever is the Red Baron's keep is you have to go – you basically you have to go to that throughout the entire game for various reasons. And they have the fast travel post outside of the gate. It should be right next to this headquarters. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And so I, I completely agree. You have to fast – you have to get off before – horse fast travel to the gate call your horse get on him and then run like another 45 seconds and i know the part you're talking about and it's so much running around and it's the longest quest line in the game it like lasts the longest and it is 
annoying. And you've played it, like, I would say, usually I'd be like, oh, you should keep playing it. But you've played enough to know whether you're going to like it or not. But all I can say is when you get to Novigrad, Novigrad, Mm -hmm. which is the city, it's like the next level up kind of, like, level gap. And so every main quest you do, you just get, like, 500 or more experience and you just jump levels. And all you're doing is running around a city talking to people. But, like, you're meeting new characters, so it's kind of setting it up, and you just level up a ton, and you get new skills. And it was after that that the gameplay started to, like, really flow for me. But you've put in at least 15 hours. Ah, yeah, i played a lot. Like, you've played a lot and not liked it, but you did have sex, and that's important. I did. I banged Kira, which was awesome. Was that that Tower Quest not kind of cool, though? It's, I mean... Again, like I feel like the quests are eighty percent conversation and twenty percent action. It's, fu- it's no, funny no, that, me, that let me all right, let me on. just let me just reamend that. It's eighty percent conversation, ten percent riding a horse, ten <laughs> percent action. And and it's and I know what you're gonna say something about Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> like I said, Red Dead Redemption, Red Dead Redemption would have conversations and then you'd go somewhere and you'd have like 20 to 30 minutes of doing something you know like the taking the mexican outpost that was like a full-fledged mission that took you like 30 or 40 minutes there's i haven't run into any of that yet like there'll be like four or five um you know like ghouls or drowners on my way to a place (laughs) i'll just like kill them and then like like i know they'll be like oh like i'm fighting a boss now but like it'll take me like five to ten minutes to kill the boss and i'm playing on the uh the one above sword and story whatever that yeah, one's yeah. called death uh, march or whatever blood and blood, bone blood and bone Blood and bone. yeah so like i'm playing on a hard difficulty and it's not really difficult and i just feel like the the conversation and transversal to gameplay isn't there yet but i'm giving it a chance because i really have nothing else to play till batman comes out but if it doesn't grab me before tuesday it's probably never getting finished so that's fair and it's hard to say, to say, oh, you you have to give it a chance when you've played it so much and you really have, and I don't think you're gonna like it because most of the story, most of the quests are like that. It's a lot of talking, and that's what people like about The Witcher, and that's actually what I like about it, is that that's how you get all the cool stories out of the characters, which if you if you don't feel those cool stories from them, then that's like clearly you're just gonna be annoyed by how long you're talking to them. Like, I'm fine talking to people if, like, there's something to do afterwards, which is, I feel like I'm always talking to someone longer than I'm doing something, anything else in the game. Anything. I think that's true. And I think, like, for me, I like that because that's the kind of games I like to play. And for a lot of people, they don't like that. So I understand that. I think what you have to do is just explore on your own for a bit. And that's when you get to just pure gameplay. Yeah. I have explored. I, I've done a lot of side quests and all okay. that stuff, and I've, I've looked around. And like some of the side quests are interesting. And like here's another thing that kind of annoys me is maybe this is just happens to be the side quest that I'm picking, but the quest that you're actually doing something, I feel like all you're doing is looking around with your wisher scent and examining things. Yeah, that's but it. that's Batman. Yeah, but like then a lot of times that doesn't lead to action. In Batman, <laughs> yeah. You do that, and you're like, okay, now it leads me to something. Sometimes that's the entire quest. I'm yep. just looking around and doing this, 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 and then I'm done. I get Batman, I do this, this, and this. Okay, now I'm going to go run him over in my Batmobile. <laughs> like, this, this <laughs> stuff that in The Witcher. Which is, what, it's, such a, it's such a tease. I, there's I like, understand. No, I get I what need, you're saying. Like, there's no, like, level. You know what I mean? Like, there's no, like, okay... Like, in order to progress the story, we got to go, like, take over this village. And you run in, there's, like, 50 <laughs> bandits there. And you got to go over and, like, actually have, like, a fun, like, t- I'm, I'm just doing this for 25 minutes. I'm running around. I'm killing people. I'm engaging in combat. And I feel like I'm making a difference. I don't feel like I'm, I feel like I'm just, like, the world's biggest errand boy right now. Wow. Running around. And, like, it amazes me. This is, like, I, I don't know if people actually like this story. He's, like like two seconds he's like oh i need to find siri if anyone or their grandmother comes over and goes like can you help me with this he he's like sure i'll do it he's never like no i need to get siri it's so annoying like literally he turns no one down no one 
And even in like the main story, like I'm saying, like obviously side quests you can just not do them if you want. But in the main story, he's just like when you're talking to the Baron, he's like, "Yeah, I'll give you your information if you do this for me." <laughs> yeah. I would just be like, "Fuck you, no! <laughs> I'm a Witcher. I could kill you right here. Let me just go on to the actual main story." I don't feel like the main story is anything but a series of errands so far. Maybe it turns into something more. But the point I'm at every main story mission is just helping someone else out and then they're like oh by the way go help this person out yes so. it is it that's one of the complaints in the reviews they're like every time you want to get anything done you have to do a favor for somebody first and it gets annoying it's a favor. and it eventually does stop the red baron's quest is the the biggest one of it eventually it stops i i recommend like if you're on your last day playing and you're like this is still not doing it Sell the, I forget what it's called, skillage, which you can do at any point. Just change your quest log and you just have to like get a boat or you might have to do something before doing it. Sail over there and just see that place first because it's just another huge world and it's a totally different change of scenery and there's like way more things to do. And I say at least see that before you stop, but I don't think you're going to like The Witcher if you're not liking it by now. I, I, it's just, I, it's not grabbing me. I don't think it will grab I me. I don't think it's for you. Which, I thought it really would because of games like Red Dead Redemption and stuff. And, like, I should have listened because I was listening to Giant Bomb Podcast, right? Which is what convinced me to get it. But there's Jeff Gertzman is the one guy I always agree with. And he's like, I played it for six hours. I was like, eh, this is not something I want to play. And him and I usually have the same <laughs> games. But then someone else made the comparison to Red Dead. I was like, oh, but like I could see the comparison they're making in that the conversations, but they didn't say that basically the conversations is what's similar, not the fact that you'll get into these like long like set piece situations and all that, you know. The those happen basically down the line. You're you're still like even though you've been playing a long time, you're in the first quest line of the first act. Yeah. I know. And, which, and to be fair, I, I you can't be like, all right, well, play another thirty hours, and then you'll get to the good part. Like that's not a good game. That's not good pacing. No. So, but it does eventually. It comes to it like you have these huge war battles where all yeah. you do for like an hour and a half is just fight people. And I know See, that's like what you're looking for. And I'm I'm hesitant to give up on it, and the main reason being that I was like a single death away from giving up on Bloodborne. And yeah. it turned out to be, like, one of my favorite games of, like, the last five years. So that's why I'm hesitant to give up on it. But I gave this at least... I was probably three hours into Bloodborne when I was like, you know what? I probably shouldn't have bought this. This isn't for me. When it clicked, I'm, like, probably 10 or 15 hours into this. And like, Yeah, you put you put enough time in this where no I one can say... I can make the decision to yeah. say, this is not for me. People like it. It might be a good game, but this is just not for me. It's not my kind of game. I, I have something... When I play a third, like, I'm fine with story development, I'm fine with people talking, but when I play a third person uh, adventure RPG or whatever you want to call it, I expect something different. So, yeah. I expect to, to do something. You know, the, yeah. I, it's, that's what we say. I love the world. I think the world is cool. It's really intriguing. It's really live. Like, you're walking around, like, oh, there's, there's so many people, and you can see how everyone's like, you know, you get a, a good feel. I love all that. Also, I don't like Gwent at all. So <laughs> I didn't either. I didn't either. That's and then just I like, finally liked it. So Yeah, that's that's nothing. Uh but yeah, so, see that's and that's I don't know. We we can stop talking about it because it's going on forever, but like that's I'm what, just saying my my part of how I feel about it. And so. I'm agreeing, like you were not you were saying very true things. You were you were, have very valid reasons. Like, yeah, I, it's good like, to hear that like what I'm saying is true and it's just it, it's on me the fact I don't like those things. You know what I mean? Like other people might love those things. So it's not like I'm just pulling stuff out of my ass and just saying yeah. why I don't like it. I'm just saying things that are true that I personally don't like in a game. So Yeah, but it's it's and the things that people really like are when they discover something unscripted. Like you keep talking about like you kinda want more of a scripted thing occurring, but what people love about the Witcher is like, you will, will walk by, like, a hut, and you'll see people banging on a door, and you can get off your horse, and you can fight those people, and you'll save done, something I've, inside. I've done some of that stuff, which is cool, and, like, I like that part, but that those moments feel fleeting. You know what I mean? They're very like, quick. But it's and I'm, cool. like, and, and I'm starved for that. I'm starved yeah. for – I want to go out there and kill something with my sword, and I just feel like I'm running around talking to people. Like, this bloody Baron quest – really took a lot for me to get through like i just feel bored like i'll just be like riding my horse 
and then like I'll get like a text and I'll get like lost on my phone for ten minutes. Like I'm not invested because I'm like, oh, like I, see. I know like all I'm just gonna go. All I'm gonna do is like go back and talk to the bear, and he's gonna be like, let me tell you a tale. <laughs> and it's just, it makes it makes me laugh because. Conan actually pointed this out in the Clueless Gamer. He was like, he's like, you know what these people in this world like? They like a good story. And it's so true. Every time you talk to someone, they can't just tell you something up front. They have to tell you a story. It's true. So, let's see. I'll probably, after we're done with this, I'll play it for like an hour, and then I'm going to play it tomorrow because I'm not going to be able to play it this weekend, and then Batman comes out on Tuesday. So, like, this is like the last couple this hours it. it has. How, this far, is how the, far are you? I'm Which? after, I'm a, I'm a quest I've, I'm through the Bloody Baron quest. I finished that last night. You finished night. it to completion. Yeah. What what happened at the end of it for you? No, wait. I might have one more part. Yeah, I, I have one more part because I was like, are you kidding me? Uh, because I thought it was over, but I still have to go and find his wife now. So. Oh, dude. I found his, I found his daughter. Oh, man. You got so much more to that quest. Um, are you kidding me? It's It doesn't involve him as much. It's. It gets to another point. You're gonna. I'll just tell you. Go to the swamp, and you're in the swamp for a while. And then after you do all these quests in the swamp, you then go back to him one more time, and then you go back to the swamp, and then you fight more, and then it's over. That's insane. I've been at this for like two hours, it's, and nothing has happened. It is soon. You're gonna get. You're gonna get to the swamp, and you're not gonna leave that swamp for a while. But the, and before, the, I don't even think you can find. Favorite. My favorite quest was the Kara Metz quest, where you're in like the um, dungeon. The dungeon, yeah, because that was like what I want. Like yeah. you know, that's the like, only that's, one in the whole those, game. Those are the se- is it? It's the only one in the whole game. It's, right. I, I was like, because I don't like dungeons, and when this happened, I was literally like, I hope the whole game doesn't become just going into a dungeon forever. And there's a couple of them, but they're almost always side quests. That's oh. like. So yeah, that was what I liked because it was like, <laughs> oh, like here's something outside of the world that's like its own contained set piece of here's this dungeon you got to figure it out you got to fight all these people I love that, and apparently that's just not the game. All right, I don't think this I don't think this is gonna work out. I I don't think it is either. I think the point you're at though is you can't even finish the Red Baron quest until you go to Navigrad. Okay, well at least I'll see that. I guess I think it's worth seeing. It's worth just doing that, exploring it. You meet a cool character. You meet Triss, who's like one of the main love interests. Yes, you can have sex with her if that's a new goal to I get you through the game. Kira. You know, Kira is my girl. She's so hot. <laughs> okay, um, we've been going on for quite a while. I think it's time yeah. you close this it's out. Not, we're okay. we're getting close to two hours, which is pretty impressive. But. Which is lucky you for being able to listen to us for that long. Yes. All right, guys. So this has been the 21st episode of the Qualified Gamer Guys podcast. We have some stuff we need to tell you. If you're still listening, this is pretty impressive. So you should go follow us on Twitter at QualifiedGGS. You should go follow us on Twitch at twitch.tv slash QualifiedGamerGuys. You should send us an email, like we said before, like Sir Caruso did, at QualifiedGamerGuys at gmail.com. Send us your thoughts about E3. Send us your thoughts about our thoughts about E3. And we'll have a little conversation about it next Tuesday. Next week will be a Tuesday podcast. We just moved this one to Wednesday because, uh, or Thursday when you guys see it, because we, you know, want to see all of E3 before we came together and talked about it. Um, what else do I have? Oh, if you like our song, you go over to SoundCloud.com/slash/GearheadEDM. Check out that guy. He makes our, our theme music. He makes a lot of music that sounds like that. Uh, what else? I did the Twitter. I did the. Oh, if you're on our YouTube, of course, subscribe. You get a little notification every time we post a podcast, which is weekly. Uh, so, yeah. Neil, we'll also have to figure out, like, when I go back to school, if we can still do a Monday night. But we'll figure it out, everyone. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll get, that's, a, that's a ways away. We'll, we'll get you something. Um, yeah, so that's, that's all I got. Uh, thanks for listening. This has been a long one. Thanks for listening to E3. Thanks for listening to me bitch about The Witcher. Or <laughs> just tell the reasons I don't like it that much. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just thanks for coming along. And we'll see you guys next week when we're of the ripe age of 22. All right, guys. Later.